Onc Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onc Live. Uh, importantly, while we're considering uh, treatment of localized gist, it's important that we look at two particular strategies. One, of course, is risk stratification. The other is staging. It's quite common to use a, a staging system to help us determine what the prognosis of the particular disease is at a certain point in time. Patients with GIST do have a staging system endorsed by the AJCC. This evaluates both the location of the tumor, the size of the tumor, whether there's the presence of lymph nodes that are pathologically involved, and whether there's any evidence of metastasis. Also, this particular staging system incorporates the mitotic count. Once this is determined, we also stratify the stage by either small bowel or gastric origin. From this, we can determine, based on the size of the tumor, lymph node involvement, metastasis, and mitotic count, what stage the patient is generally in. Now, while this is a, an interesting system, I think in clinical practice, it's probably most, com it's most uh, common to either think about this disease as being operable or inoperable and then to do the risk stratification uh, schema. So when we think about treatment of GIST, as I mentioned earlier, the goal of care uh, is generally complete resection for patients that have uh, operable uh, or localized GIST. Now, importantly, uh, there are studies to show that use of imatinib, which is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, uh, has been shown to improve recurrence-free survival and in certain situations, overall survival. So generally, after a patient has been deemed um, treatable to the extent that surgery is required, uh, the next step that's important is risk stratification. In other words, who are the patients that are going to benefit most from just surgery alone, and who are the patients that are most likely in need of additional therapy to prevent these tumors from coming back? So there's essentially three classification systems uh, for risk stratification, which includes the AFIP system, the Memorial Sloan Kettering nomogram, and there's also the Jones who modified NIH criteria. Uh, these are all criteria that take into account where the tumor is located when it's first found. They, so, they also take into account the size of the tumor uh, as well as the mitotic uh, count. Uh, importantly, the NIH criteria also uh, looks upon whether the tumor was uh, ruptured during the time of surgery. Once we have a risk stratification tool that's chosen, uh, it's important to determine if the patient's at low risk or high risk. If the patient's at low risk, meaning having a tumor that's essentially two centimeters in size or smaller, if it's a tumor that has a very low mitotic count, and if it's a tumor located in the stomach, the chance of the tumor coming back would be much lower um, and would most likely benefit from surgery alone. So patients that are at intermediate risk of recurrence uh, is the group that is uh, probably the most complicated. So these are generally tumors that are either small but have a high mitotic count, or they may be large tumors that have a low mitotic count. There was a recent study published in the uh, Journal of Jam Oncology by Annie Gearing et al., uh, in which, um, that I had an opportunity to participate in, in which we found that the risk uh, of recurrence was actually underestimated by about 37% among local practi uh, practitioners of uh, oncology. Uh, what this means, um, or what this translated into, is that patients that were underestimated were found to have a worse recurrence-free survival compared to patients that had the typical planned uh, treatment course. Patients who undergo surgical resection for gastrointestinal stroma tumors have a high risk of recurrence. And uh, before imatinib was available, we really had no treatments that worked for these patients. And if you look at historical data, we know that over 50% of patients with GIST recurred within the first two to five years. So for that reason, it's important for us to stratify patients that may benefit from adjuvant treatment. Similar to what we've done in many other cancers, we usually have the new treatments and use them in patients that have active disease and subsequently move them into patients that have had a complete surgical resection and then use them in an adjuvant setting in patients that have a high risk of recurrence. In patients who have undergone a complete resection of the gastrointestinal stromal tumor, we always discuss adjuvant therapy with the patient. And we usually base this on the uh, risk of the tumor recurring. 
There are several nomograms that have been developed in which one can assess this risk. These nomograms are usually based on the size of the tumor, the location of the tumor, and also the mitotic index. We also look at the studies that have been performed to determine if the patient is eligible for adjuvant therapy. I don't believe that all patients with GIST should receive adjuvant uh, imatinib, specifically patients with very small tumors that have very low mitotic count and that are gastric origin, have a very low risk of recurrence. However, I believe that all patients with GIST should be discussed in a multidisciplinary setting with medical oncologists, surgeons, pathologists, and radiologists, and radiation oncologists to really have the best optimal treatment for patients. In patients then that qualify for adjuvant therapy, we usually recommend starting with imatinib at 400 milligrams per day. Uh, there are in some centers, depending on the mutational analysis of the patient, uh, that they may give 800 milligrams per day, specifically in patients that have exon 9 mutations. However, the data for that in an adjuvant setting is not mature. So for this reason, the current recommendation is for patients to receive imatinib at 400 milligrams per day.